I'm going to start by introducing you to a dear friend of mine, the bubonic plague. <laughs> this little guy causes fevers, muscle pains, headaches, seizures, and of course, eventual death, along with some painful black swollen lymph glands that give it the name the Black Death. Fun times. <laughs> now, as I'm describing that, you may be imagining some peasant back in 1350, desperately beating away rats with a stale baguette, as he is slowly killed by a disease that has already taken 25 million lives. But what if I told you that this happened to someone on the 18th of November 2019, and that it was the third reported case in China last year? You see, diseases we previously thought to be long past history are making a comeback, and it's all thanks to a phenomena known as antibiotic resistance. Now, as we all know, antibiotic resistance is when a medicine, sorry, a bacteria is exposed to medicine and mutates to try and survive and become resistant to it. Then, after it has survived all that medicine, it begins to replicate within the body until there is a contagious infection which cannot be treated by any known medicine in the world. Antibiotic-resistant infections were estimated to kill 35,000 each year in the US alone, with 2.8 million incidences, and those rates will only increase. And although it could just take the form of a common cold, what if there was an outbreak of an antibiotic-resistant pneumonic plague, an airborne version of our previously mentioned bubonic bro, that can kill within 36 hours and not a single doctor in the world would be able to save your life? Well, now for the bad news. <laughs> you see, globalization and time-space compression has meant, as we continue to develop roads and planes, I can get to Australia in about 17 hours, essentially meaning time and space has become obsolete and the world is brought closer together into what geographers call a global village. And you bet that when one of those global villages catches a spot of the old plague, it's going to travel a lot faster than some peasant on a horse and cart. It travels so fast, in fact, that I made a rehearsal for this very TED talk, I had to update it on the coronavirus. The brand new epidemic, which originated in China and has already killed hundreds of people and has had many cases pop up globally. One of the first of which was in Australia because of someone flying from China to help with the massive bushfires. What a time to be alive. <laughs> you see, I've always been fascinated with how the world's going to end. It may be pessimistic, but as a young, macabre geographer, <laughs> I am painfully aware of and interested in the colossal problems the world will face and how they can be solved. In fact, for my GCSE English speaking presentation, I was going to outline a 10-step quick and easy guide to achieving total world unity through military domination, of course. <laughs> that was until my teacher told me it would be considered a terrorist threat and that he was legally obliged to call the authorities. <laughs> Talk about a buzzkill. But I didn't let that curb my fascination for the apocalypse. Oh, no, because as I thought more about climate change, nuclear war, antibiotic resistance, I naturally thought, what the hell's being done about them? Turns out, nothing reassuring at all. I mean, World Health Organization who? <laughs> Although there are, of course, advances being made in medical science to combat this, like antibiotic-resistant breakers, a fairly recent medicine which, when taken in conjunction with other medicines, increases their efficiency by inhibiting various enzymes and increasing the permeability of membranes, essentially just allowing medicine back into the resistant bacteria. There are also more theoretical possibilities for solutions, like figuring out protein folding, which would allow us to understand the mechanisms behind the resistance and reverse engineer solutions, or even make specific targeted enzymes to track down resistant bacteria and dissolve them. But none of that's any of your business. <laughs> if you're feeling really inspired, you could take antibiotics for the entire prescribed time or not eat meat that's had a ton of the stuff used on them. But hey, no need to panic, right? We're the bloody human race. We don't need some guy telling us we're on the brink of yet another global catastrophe, because we've got a can-do attitude and science to save us. And who's to say that view is wrong? Through medical science, we've conquered HIV, swine flu, tuberculosis, and so many more. And we, as a human race, are still going. So stay hopeful. Don't needlessly take antibiotics and spread awareness, not the plague. <laughs>